Ice stop. Ice what? Whoa, whoa, baby, poke it out, whoa. poke it out, poke it out. Whoa. What's up, everyone? So today we're gonna be doing the New Orleans Saints versus the Carolina Panthers, predicted by Madden. And what sucks is that I had already recorded this video, and in classic me fashion, I had turned up the volume after the last episode of this series. Um, to play like an actual game and I forgot to turn it down so the volume was louder than my voice and it ruined the entire video which sucks but I'm hoping it doesn't happen again I have the audio for the game at 2 and my voice a bit louder than that so in all actuality we should be fine I'm gonna go ahead and look at the uh, prediction from last week I completely forgot what it was I went to go back and find it before the video started but I managed to forget. So the New Orleans Saints ended up, uh, let's see, let's see what the prediction was. We beat the Buccaneers 32-26 to in an overtime thriller. So uh, the Madden was right as far as who won. The score wasn't quite on, but it was close enough to be considered right because they got the team correct. So let's see if they can go ahead and make a two-game streak for as far as, you know, getting the predictions right goes and let's go ahead and get the prediction set for the new orleans saints versus carolina panthers so of course uh, your favorite team's game play your recommended matchup uh, i'm going to take a look at the injury report right about now and we'll be able to see everything as far as who's going to play who's likely to play and who isn't going to play because that's important, and we have to be able to sit the players that we need to sit. So the injury report is right here, and it's going to be pretty interesting, I assume. Ryan Ramchek and Larry Warford were on there at one point um, a day ago. I'm hoping stuff like that cleared out because I'm just thinking it was rest. They've both been playing great. Okay, Andreas Pete obviously didn't practice. Marshawn Lattimore did not practice. Deontay Harris did not practice. Zach Line for, oh wait, that's Wednesday. But he still didn't practice. Uh, Josh Hill was limited. Larry Warford was full. Austin Carr was limited. And Ryan Ramschek practiced fully. That is what I like to hear. So the only players that I think are going to miss this game, Andreas Pete, Marshawn Lattimore, Deontay Harris, and Zach Line. And yeah, you could say I just casually listed off the entire team, but I promise I didn't. Let's go ahead and see if the game has already made those changes for us so I don't have to go and do it myself. I'm going to keep Zach Line in because I don't really know who else to put but him. Uh, the rosters are fully updated. Um, Jared Cook's an 85, which is pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Nick Easton's in. His overall went up a point. Eric McCoy, Larry Warford, and Ryan Ramschick. So that's perfectly fine, but we have to go do the sad, sad act of benching Marshawn Lattimore, who is a 87. That's pretty respectable. So it's Eli Apple, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, and PJ Williams yet again rolling out. All stepped up extremely well against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Mike Evans and Chris Godwin did not get the production going that their team needed to win. Uh, they had a total of, I believe, 114 yards and a touchdown, one being a 30-yard touchdown by Chris Godwin, a kind of a garbage time score like he had against us in the first game. So the corner is out of the way. Let's go ahead and go to the kick returner. Let's bench Deontay Harris and put Alvin Kamara in his place and the punt returner do the same. So now that we got that out of the way, we can go ahead and start the predictions and see what Madden has to say about this matchup. I'm pretty excited, so let's go ahead and hop into it. But before we do that, I'm sorry, it's a bit unprofessional, but I need to create a projector to actually see because I'm basically blind. So let's go ahead and super sim. And then we're going to click on jump forward to the next quarter. So uh, the Panthers get there to say, okay, wow, like seven possession changes. The Saints score, get the ball back, and it is uh, the Saints ball, second and one on the 16-yard line with six minutes left in the second quarter. We just started. Saints up seven to nothing. I jump to the next play, and the next play was a 16-yard touchdown to Michael Thomas, who has been having a career year and one of the best years by a receiver in NFL history. Let's go ahead and jump to the next quarter. Carolina gets the ball back, and they score a touchdown. New Orleans gets it. They score a touchdown as well. It's back and forth looking, um, and eight, we go into the half. Carolina seven down 7-21. Seven to 21. They're going to have to change something if they want to win this game. The New Orleans Saints have been controlling it from the start. Let's go ahead and jump to the next quarter. Uh, New Orleans gets the ball. They score 28 to 7. Oh my God, it's an absolute massacre. 35 to 7. 
New Orleans up, Carolina fourth and five. I'm assuming this is a uh, – you're, you're going to go for it here, down 35-7. to seven. Just try to get to the end of the game. Uh, okay, Carolina, okay, it, it's, it's really – okay, it's not really showing me much. Uh, the, the, the seeing the plays is actually really, really, really bad on the simulation. It goes by so fast. I could, I should probably turn the speed down next time I make these videos. That would make a lot more sense. But Drew Brees, wow, 349 yards and five touchdowns. So Madden, is that how you feel? The New Orleans Saints absolutely beat up on the Panthers on all cylinders. Scored 35, only allowing 7. Wow. It's going to be pretty interesting to look at these stats. So, Saints had more passing, rushing, average yards per play, no takeaways, which is pretty interesting considering we're playing against Kyle Allen. But Michael Thomas leads his team back to the locker room. Let's go ahead and take a look at these stats. They're bound to be interesting. So, Kyle Allen had a pretty respectable game for a backup quarterback. 14 completions, 26 attempts, 128 yards, and a touchdown. Drew Brees leading the way with 141.7 rating, which is amazing. 32 completions on 41 attempts for 349 yards and five touchdowns. It's going to be pretty interesting to see who were the beneficiaries of those passing touchdowns. Rushing-wise, Alvin Kamara had a big day like we all think he's going to. 25 attempts, 116 yards, 6 broken tackles, looking like his old self. Christian McCaffrey had 15 attempts for 65 yards. The New Orleans Saints' run defense holds up its two-year streak of not allowing a 100-yard rusher. A couple days ago was the two-year anniversary of the last time the New Orleans Saints uh, uh, had a 1,000-yard rusher. I'm pretty sure it was that Washington Redskins game that we ended up coming back during. Uh, yeah, that was the last time we had a 100-yard rusher. Quite insane. Latavius Murray had nine carries for 30 yards, and that's about it from there. Michael Thomas had eight receptions, 90 yards, two touchdowns. Absolute beast game from him yet again. Jared Cook with seven receptions, 64 yards, and a touchdown. I would be very pleased with a stat line from that, like, like that from Jared Cook. It's going to be nice to see him get in more involved, uh, you know, towards the back half of the season. Ted Ginn Jr. with six receptions, 63 yards, and a touchdown. Greg Olson did his thing. DJ Moore did his thing. Alvin Kamara had four receptions for 58 yards and a touchdown against the best uh, defense as far as covering receiving backs goes. Pretty interesting. Trey Colin Smith, a three reception for 31 yards. Uh, Josh Hill had a couple of receptions, and that is that. So, very interesting. It was a pretty even spread as far as touchdowns goes. It's who you would expect. Um, you know, Alvin Kamara, uh, Ted Ginn Jr., Jared Cook, and Michael Thomas getting involved. If we had a game like that, uh, that's how you know the offense is going very, very, very well. Let's go look at the, de the defensive stats. Dante Jackson actually had a ton of tackles, nine of them. Brian Burns had 10 tackles, two of them for a loss, but zero sacks. We scrolled down. The Carolina dominated the tackle uh, sheet right there, but I'm assuming that has to do with time of possession. P.J. Williams had eight tackles and a tackle for the loss. No picks, no sacks. Um, A.J. Klein had four tackles, one tackle for loss. Luke Keekley had five tackles, zero uh, sacks. Von Bell had five tackles and half a sack. Sheldon Rankins had a sack. Cameron Jordan had a sack. Wow, just spreading the wealth here. Um, and Marcus Davenport split that sack with Von Bell. Very interesting. Uh, let's look at the kicking. Will Lutz didn't kick a single field goal, which is a very, very, very good sign. That means the offense was doing what it's supposed to do and scoring in the red zone, which has been a very prominent problem for the New Orleans Saints this year. Uh, I think before last week, we were one for eight on red zone trips as far as touchdown goes. So that definitely needs to change or on opening drives anyway. The New Orleans Saints need to clean that up, and it looks like they did it in this game. Five extra points made by Will Lutz. He was five for five, 100%. Beautiful play by him. Again, it, it's always like that. Um, as you can see, the punt game was completely dominated by Carolina, which is a very, very, very interesting statistic to look at. Alvin Kamara had no kick returns and uh, one punt return. Interesting. That's about it for the stats. Uh, it's, 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 it's a very... Okay. I'm not going to tell you what I believe as far as the outcome of the game. I do think it will be closer than 35-7, to 7, though, if the New Orleans Saints do win. It's a divisional opponent. It's very rare that we blow somebody out 35-7 to 7 in the division, unless it's Tampa. So, 
I don't really know how far I'm, I'm going to, you know, back um, Madden with this. They were right last week, but who knows if this week is going to be the same. Let's find out. We can only wait until Sunday. The New Orleans Saints have a big opportunity in front of themselves. Two back-to-back -back divisional games, one on Sunday and one a couple days later on Thursday. They put these two games away. They locked themselves in the NFC South as the divisional winners, and they pretty much put themselves in great contention to take control of the NFC. The Saints need control their own destiny and need to get things done. This would be a perfect start for that. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you stopping by. If you enjoyed, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that fancy jazz, and I'll see you, boy. Wait, do you guys agree with Madden? Comment down below. And I'll see you, boys, in the next one. Adios. Uh, Ballin' like Barkley, wrist so sparkly Internet surfing, feel like I Carly